Liza Koshy has had quite the career, and to some who don't keep up with her to this day on social media, you might be wondering what she's doing right now. Liza started out on Vine, and she gained over 7 million followers on the platform. I can't wait to meet my perfect match, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sparks will fly, what are you doing? You're single, huh? Yeah. Did you just move out? Want some tips for how to live on your own? Here's the key to having your own place. <laughs> She had managed to transfer some of that following over to a YouTube channel where she made comedic videos telling jokes, had quick cuts, and sometimes she would get into character. We are back. so freaking excited. Hi there, everyone. It's Deb Lasname, but you can call me Deborah for long. And welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey guys, what up? It's your girl, Liza. Coming at you. And welcome back to my YouTube channel. And guess who's back? And guess who's Carlos? It's me. Stop guessing. Wait, what are you doing here? You're not anywhere in the script. But I am in the pants. What? She was gaining millions and millions of subscribers, and at the time, so was her boyfriend, David Dobrik. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my second channel. Today, I'm here with one of my girlfriends, Liza. One of them! Today, we're going to be doing the uh, Try Not To Make Me Laugh. <laughs> Liza was an original Vlog Squad member, which is crazy to think about now that all has unfolded with the Vlog Squad. But yes, she was a original Vlog Squad member. And some have credited her following as the reason as to why David even blew up in the first place. 569. I got it. My treat. No. It's fine. No, no, no. No, it's okay. No, no, no. No. Where do you want to eat, Sunshine? Sunshine. You do the triathlon, huh? Try to do three things at once. Okay. That was two. <sighs> You're right. They were the couple of YouTube for two years and had fans in the palm of their hands wanting more and more content from them. Their relationship was extremely public, but the two of them were never intimate on camera. They never kissed in videos and for sure kept aspects of their life super private. They still filmed so many videos together from challenges to vlogs on David's channel. Liza's career was really taking off and in 2018, she was getting more and more opportunities and it seemed to some that she was sort of distancing herself from the vlog squad and on David's channel as her career began to take off. She was really focusing on herself and she was making big moves outside of the YouTube platform. She had been invited to the Met Gala that year to host on the red carpet for Vogue interviewing celebrities and following the Met Gala almost a month later, fans were absolutely shocked and crushed when David and her posted that they broke up. The video went absolutely viral on YouTube. It received millions and millions of views. It was insane. But David admitted in that video that Liza had actually broken up with him six months ago. After that, it was clear that she wasn't going to have YouTube be her main focus like it once was. And she was putting everything into other ventures. Throughout her time on YouTube, she was constantly expressing from early on that she had an interest in acting and really tried to pursue that. In 2018, the same year that she was at the Met Gala and her and David broke up, she had also started her YouTube originals show called Liza on Demand, and it put her on the map. She had previously guest appeared on a few things, but this was her show. She was producing it as well as starring in it, and it earned her other opportunities, such as hosting a show on Nickelodeon called Double Dare, and later a role in a Netflix film called Work It. Before the release of that Netflix film, though, in 2020, she was actually under fire that June for racially insensitive videos that she had posted early on in her YouTube career alongside David Dobrik, and the two were both under fire for them. She ended up making a video on her channel with this statement saying, you can be someone who has no intention to be racist, but because you're conditioned in a world that is racist, in a country that is structured in anti-black racism, you yourself can perpetuate those ideas. Ibram X. Kendi, author, historian, and leading scholar of race and discriminatory policy in America, no matter what color you are. This quote was shared with me in conversation a couple weeks ago and has been sitting in my heart ever since. While we focus on systemic anti-Black racism in our country, I've been hesitant to center my voice. My work has been within, but now I recognize and take responsibility for the times I was not the ally I am becoming today. 
Being anti-racist requires a personal reckoning and I can't in good faith continue to use my platform for progress without taking accountability myself. I am taking inventory, taking initiative, and taking note that my impact and influence will weigh greater than my intention. What I once thought of as innocent jokes were actually tainted with implicit bias and what might have been intended as playful was actually to some incredibly painful and for that I am so sorry. As a woman of color and self-defined little brown girl, I have experienced the harm of prejudices in my own life. However, this reality does not exempt me from the responsibility of acknowledging the times I've unknowingly perpetuated racist ideas. I see now that some of my previous influences in my own past thinking, speaking, and storytelling reinforced stereotypes. I created characters of different cultures with the intent of celebrating them, but with the impact of appropriating them. Impact outweighs intent. I'm sorry to the beautiful communities that I have caused hurt within. It takes a combination of individual and collective reckoning with our past to heal and move forward together. Consider this my resignation from ignorance and my declaration as an ally in action. I will give grace, make space, and break these damn systems in place like my life depends on it because too many do. Thank you to my guardian angels in life and online who have been gracefully guiding this growth of mine and I thank God for my continuous awareness awakening. And at that time, people really appreciated that she hadn't tried to blame others or cry on camera for sympathy, but simply just took accountability and admitted fault. Since then, Liza has gone on to have a very successful career. I feel like she's not super active on social media, and I think that is very intentional. I think that Emma Chamberlain is mildly modeling her career towards how Liza has in terms of creating content here and there on socials, but keeping this really professional aspect to their lives and really transforming into more of a quote unquote celebrity instead of staying in this influencer category. Cause when you think about it, celebrities aren't always really on social media. Like when you think of an actress in a movie, like they're not really posting on Instagram, like how Tana Mojo is posting on Instagram. And I think that these two have really created this distance from themselves between people online that follow them and what they're actually doing in their life. And they're curating their content like how a celebrity would. And it's working. I mean, they're out here doing really big things. They're just like more private about some of these things. And I feel like that's a thing. Like people have said that Liza is irrelevant or she fell off and she's not doing anything anymore, but she is. She literally is, you guys. She currently has seven projects in the works, one of which is a film set to come out in November, where she is starring alongside Zac Efron, Joey King, Kathy Bates, and Nicole Kidman. She's also in the new Transformers movie as the voice of Arcee. So she's out here. She's doing the damn thing. And she's hosted shows like she was hosting a show with Nick Jonas before. I mean, she is out here. I feel like just because she's not posting on YouTube and shouting it from the rooftops on Instagram, it doesn't mean that she fell off. She's irrelevant. It, it actually, it seems to mean that she is successful and she is getting her bag. That is for sure. She's also still receiving hosting jobs. She may not be doing the red carpet for Vogue anymore at the Met Gala, but in January, she was asked to co-host ABC's New Year's Rock and Eve with Ryan Seacrest. Every now and then she might drop a video on YouTube to promote a new project, but she really has moved on. And I think in the best way possible, as much as we might not hear about her like before, she is working on these huge projects and she's really managed to grow her career beyond just being a social media star. She is a cele I mean, you're not in a movie with Zac Efron and Kathy Bates and Joey King and Nicole Kidman, and you're not a celebrity. Like she cannot be a, YouTuber girl anymore because she doesn't even really make YouTube videos. So I feel like Liza has crossed over and leaving the vlog squad behind was the best thing she ever did for herself, truly. Because when you look at the vlog squad and what they're up to now, it's very clear that she made the best decision to go have that mean time and go take care of her career because she's out here getting these big opportunities and look at where they're at. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you guys have been keeping up with Liza, if you guys have watched any of the project that she's been in, I've seen her in Liza On Demand, which was very good. I watched Work It, which I really liked that. Let me know if you guys have seen anything, if you're excited for any of the projects that she has coming up in the comments. I love you guys so much, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye, guys.